Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today we are discussing one of the all-time greats from Zenith of Lelok, Switzerland. This is the Zenith El Primero Chronomaster, a timepiece that was launched during the 1990s and discontinued in chronometer specification by the early 2000s. So this is a rare timepiece from the pre terry Nataf era that combines all of the virtues we expect of traditional Zenith. Impeccable workmanship, advanced engineering, practicality, and everyday durability. 40 millimeters in stainless steel, it's also a versatile size. You'll note it has an impressive stance because of the broad and shapely lugs, as well as the double-stepped fluted lug profile and triple-stepped bezel. But it's only a 40 millimeter watch in outright size and a wonderfully welcoming 13.1 millimeters thick, welcoming for that dress cuff that will easily jump up over the flank of the rounded box section sapphire and the triple stepped slope of the bezel flank. Lug to lug, it's a very wearable 46.7 millimeters. This watch is perfectly acceptable for wrists as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference. If you wish to accessorize, it has a 20 millimeter lug spacing and you'll find a bevy of aftermarket and OEM options. That said, this particular Chronomaster, which I date between roughly 1998 and 2001 for reasons we'll explain in a moment, has received some factory upgrades. First, leather alligator strap, you can see with sheer sides, thick cut, black monotone stitch, and on the underside, this is how you know it's a recent Zenith upgrade strap. It features the inlaid natural rubber that is both wonderfully comfortable and separates the leather of the strap from the oils of your wrist. This has every indication of being a decade strap. That is, if you don't get it wet, this strap could easily last a decade in use. Here's the other upgrade, a recent construction Zenith trigger actuated full polished steel double deployant clasp. These watches would have originally shipped with a non-trigger clasp or a pin buckle. So to get the trigger actuated clasp that gives you an extra measure of security, as well as the full finish, luster, and ergonomic curved profile of the latest Zenith clasp on one of Zenith's greatest watches, it's the best of both worlds. A significant upgrade about the strap and the clasp. I'm saving the best for last, and that is of course the watch itself. Now this was part of a series that represented the flagship of the manufacturer. Its production was coincident in time terms with the rainbow flybacks, as well as the late DeLucas. You can see that the case profile is simple, but fluted to give it strength. It doesn't have size, it does have character. It's all of a high polish to give it an impressive presence, and it has vintage inspired lozenge profile pushers. You can see the period zenith crown with the zenith star and you will note the dial is beautifully rich but easy to read and orderly in its layout you can see all applied stylized roman numerals for the hours dauphine hands at center faceted for contrast you'll also note stepped apertures for the day as well as the month and the date a moon phase crescent style at six o'clock tri-register chronograph hours minutes and seconds and yes it is a cosc certified swiss chronometer countersunk subs it is a beautiful lateral symmetry from side to side the date has been placed to minimally obstruct the symmetry and balance of this style and it pulls it off caliber 410z on the case back will give the dial a run for its money. Now here's how I know this watch was made between roughly 2001 and 1998. Late 97, early 1998 was the turnover from the 410s and the 400s to the 410Zs. Some changes were made to the escapement and in about 2001, the chronomaster ceased to be a chronometer. So this watch was made prior to the 2001 cutoff for chronometers and after the upgrade to Z spec caliber 410. That said, it's everything you expect in an El Primero. 10 beats per second, 36,000 vibrations per hour. An old school, no nonsense, column wheel lateral clutch chronograph. You can see the column wheel interacting with its levers and horns and the lateral clutch moving out of and into contact with the driving center wheel of the chronograph. You can also see when you reset the system, the El Primero is wonderfully open and easy to see. So you can watch the recentering hammers acting on the heart cam at center. 50 hour power reserve in spite of the 36,000 vibration per hour beat rate. You'll also note some of the quirky finishing traits of Zenith El Primero. 
This is true for the Elite as well, but Zenith tends to put perlage on bridges rather than on base plates and uses two different types of screws. Polished screws for physically assembling and holding stuff in place, and blued screws that are used for physical adjustment of the mechanism itself. 50 hour power reserve, 31 joules. This is a beautiful movement, a masterpiece of engineering to cap a masterpiece of industrial design on the dial side. These watches are scarce. They were not produced in contemporary industrial quantities, and for most of the lifespan of the original COSC certified Chronomaster, Zenith had to dedicate quite a good bit of its production capacity to making movements for Rolex, so these were always scarce. Rolex got priority, Zenith's own watches often were not favored. As a result, these are far scarcer than any Zenith-powered Daytonas. You can see and make this one yours on the watch box.